I'm Zach. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. I'm Darren. And we are Infamous Brewing Company. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The Beer, Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35. Hey folks, I'm Greg from The Beer Diaries. I am here at Infamous Brewing Company, one of Austin's newest breweries, with Josh and Zach, the founders, Matt, the head brewer, and we are having some of their beers in the Texas heat. Perhaps on The Beer Diaries, you've seen us here in Austin sweating. There'll be a little bit of sweating today, I'll tell you that right now, but we got awesome beer to keep us cool. And I mean, you guys have invited us into your brew house. Really appreciate it, and it's awesome to be here. Thank you so much. You're Thank very you welcome. so much for joining us. Glad, Glad to have you all here. How long have you guys been around for? It's, you guys are the newest full production brewery? We are six months now, almost six two, months. to the day. You guys are vet, beer veterans we here We are in beer vets. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we've been around the That's block a couple of times, um, but really almost six months to the day as far wow. as selling a beer goes. Yeah. Uh, we're as a year and a half into actual building and, wow. uh, and, and getting this all together. Josh and I met at a bar in New York City and happened to be there on a Sunday in September back in 2011. Our mutual friend bartender came up to us and said do you two know each other <laughs> and she came back with two shots of Jameson and said you two should talk and the reason she said that was because she knew both of us in our own individual lives she knew that I had a career that I was really looking to kind of change from we spent more time talking about it most of which is lost over Jameson but <laughs> so, so you guys decided I, then and there, hey, we're going to brew together, it, and it's on. I think that we had the uh, unique experience and unique opportunity to uh, to make that a reality. Yeah, very um, cool. Were um, you either you guys from here? Like, are either you guys from Austin? No, um, I was living in Austin currently. My wife uh, is from Houston originally. Okay, so and her you brother some, some Texas connection. Absolutely. Okay. So I'd been traveling down here for years prior uh, to okay. moving you here, but I had been living too. here for several years before okay, that uh, fateful trip back to New York where I met Zach. Uh, I was actually going back up to go watch a Giants game at the stadium. Oh, nice. And uh, I was catching the early games at my old bar where I'd hang out, the Harry Monk, which unfortunately no longer exists, oh, but I like to great, say that the best name, things though. came out of it. It's, it's pretty cool, actually, I still have the original sign from the front of the bar, it's about a 20 foot sign that was on 3rd Avenue. Sign. And uh, when we do open our tasting room or tap room, that will uh, become the bar at the, uh, at the tasting me? room. So we'll inlay that and- uh, He is that kidding. What's it called? The no, Harry Monk. Oh, I thought you said the Harry Mom. The Harry Mom. Oh, we've already, we've already started. Oh, we're going back, back to your oh, mom and jokes now. Come on, buddy. Wait, I had to open it Matt, up. Matt, Matt, we got to, okay. Matt, um, Matt felt disincluded. But, yeah, uh, no, I was actually, so. Uh, but me, yeah, I was li living here several years before uh, before oh, cool. that. Uh, and so when Zach came down, I introduced yeah. him to the area. So, Matt, I w like, how did you get mixed up with these dudes? Like, how did this all happen? Three years ago, I was living in, living in Wichita Falls and, and brewing there and, and building homebrew equipment for so you, friends. So were you, you were a professional brewer at the time there? Or no, you? and not at all, just homebrewer. So you're homebrew, the hardcore homebrewer. Yeah, then. hardcore, big time nerd. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but I was, on this show, it's totally cool to be a, a brewing nerd. Oh yeah, I was, actually, I was a actually, huge it's nerd. It's actually expected and, and desired. Yeah, I, I actually had um, a system for sale. Uh, at, that I had posted on Craigslist, and that's that's actually how I met Josh. Ah, oh, okay, cool. And you, were you homebrewing back in the day? I was. Well? I was in my kitchen sink, and um, let Matt, you know, finish up. But uh, we uh, we we met by virtue of Craigslist, which yeah, is he, rather. Interesting. I can remember uh, Josh and his brother-in-law pulled up in the driveway, and I just thought these guys look pretty interesting. <laughs> Uh, and he actually brought some beer that he had made uh, at, at home, uh, and I think it was like he was doing like one gallon batches at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of thought, "What the hell are you doing? You this isn't enough beer. You're gonna drink that in a day." Yeah, that's like a, that's like an afternoon. So that's that was my sales that. pitch. Yeah, yeah. You know, you need more beer. Here's yeah. your, here's what you need right what here. What you need is this Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> it's got but plenty I, of trunk space. But I had, you know, I'd. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I had I had uh, I had talked Especially to several people, yes. and uh, nobody could real. It was a fairly large system because I was using this system for my my one barrel uh, system in Wichita Falls, and then built a new three tier system. But anyway, it was so it was large, and most people couldn't 
just didn't have the space for it. And, yeah, they, they, they Josh, like, it's, it's kind of imposing to go. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take up my whole garage, like brew right, beer. Right, whatever, yeah, right. Mo- yeah. The and wives I, are like, I had this warehouse, yeah, no so chance. it was an easy fit oh, to be right, able to move right. things in here. And so he was interested, and, and uh, I felt like you know he was he he was going to use the equipment because there were some people that that. I just said, yeah, if you're not going to use it, I'm not going to sell it to you. I don't have to sell it. <laughs> so you like, sound like a difficult seller. You're like one of those guys that's like, yeah, I don't think you're, you're, I don't really want to part with it, but, but you my know, wife's making me, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that actually brings up a really good kind of transition, right? Because when I moved here, um, Josh and I had met each other, but there was no brewery, you know? We were still just couple of guys you who guys had a like, good idea. It was a theoretical. Working on that. There, was still, there, was, yeah. still, there yeah. was still there was still an idea there, yeah. right? And it was very quickly Matt who was going to be the person right, we right. worked with. And I think that, you know, not only did he have the skills, you know, the skills to do it, the mindset, but also just the personal investment. This is what he wanted to do. I moved to Austin for beer. Oh, really? Yes. So you, I you put, sold everything and moved to Austin. Wow, that's pretty wild. I'm going to jump back to you in a moment. And you were, you actually had a business that was a, a beer gift basket business but so, oh, so all you guys had, had this crazy kind of beerism in your past like yep. your, what, what was your, your past um, business? it was a company called beer bouquet and it was an idea i came up with drinking with my brother-in-law yeah. and um it was a, a a manner of what's the quick gift for a woman to be able to give to a guy yeah. and uh what it comes down to is sports beer and salty snacks and so i combined all of those things and meat. i mean meat, salty and meat. Snacks, well had, yes of course beef jerky pretzels yeah. peanuts uh and it was a very interesting business it was a great idea and uh, and i grew it to a uh, to a, a national company uh, in very short amount of time, right. and unfortunately, uh, due to three-tiered system laws, which we talked about, yeah. um, I couldn't keep it. So yeah. I had to pick which child I loved the most, and uh, and, and and this here, one. And here we are. Yeah, and here we are. So Matt, one thing I was thinking about is that you know, as the head brewer and a welder, that's probably like the ultimate combination. You, you built a lot of this equipment. Like right. A lot of the equipment here. You want to take us through the brew house, barrel size, you know, like what you got back. Like you built this whole thing, right? Like. Yeah, most of it. Um, so it's a it's a seven barrel brew house. Yeah. Um, actually, the, our hot liquor tank is uh, thirty barrel. Okay. Um, we figured it's the, it's the big boy back there. It's right? the yeah. That's uh, what we call it. The the Abrams. Yeah. M one A one. M one A one. Yeah. And it's actually a recirculation system um, where the the water is drawn off the bottom, goes through the sides through some copper, uh, where the heat is kind of funneled from the bottom up these these channels and then yeah. it heats on its way back over into the top. Um, and it's it's very effective. We actually heat water faster, uh, we're, and we're direct fire. Our whole system is yeah. direct fire, but we can heat water. So that's kind of old school in a way. So it's a lot, very a lot old of folks, school. A lot of folks are doing it's, like steam uh, jackets. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. yeah. One question I had um, was, how do you come up? How have you come up with the recipes? Like I'm drinking a cream ale. When I came down here, I, these were these were styles that I was used to drinking uh, up in the Northeast. Yeah. When I moved down here, I ran across a, a beer, Jenny Cream Ale, that uh, one of the restaurants happened to have, and I'm like, oh man, I grew up on that beer, and I had it, and I was like, oh, this is freaking <laughs> terrible. Your, your palate's mature. Um, it, it has. Well, like I say, any beer before you're legally able to buy beer is a good beer. Yeah, yeah. And so that that's what I think I was holding on to at that point, but it. and it wasn't, and, and and it was at that point I said, well. Maybe I should try and make this type of beer and see what I can do as, so as turning this into a craft. To, you're trying to make it, yeah. Absolutely, and so it was a style of beer I was brewing here on that you know homebrew system, yeah. and uh, everybody in the neighborhood was coming out and loving the beer. No, it's it's, 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 it's it's real tasty. I mean, like this this is it's a really nice it's a light lighter beer, mm-hmm. but like a like tangy tart. Like it's mm-hmm. got it's got a nice kind of body to it. Like, Zach's mom loves it. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, she does. Yeah. She's a big fan actually. So so um, so it, so it's a it's an ale. It's an ale, ale that mimics a lager, and okay. uh, and the idea behind the beer is, is hybrid, that it's is a, a hybrid uh, yeast. Or it's not a hybrid yeast. It's uh, it, it's an American ale yeast, but it's uh, brew, it's at a slightly colder temperature. Oh, I see. So you actually conditioned uh, it a little bit. And like... really, the, the genesis of the beer is that when people were on horseback coming down, you know, south into warmer climates in the early 1800s, they couldn't lager in a hillside like they used to. You know, dig a hole and yeah, put yeah. your fermenters in there, and the you and you had a good yeah. lager. But they wanted to uh, be able to drink the same style of beer that they were used to. So uh, what they did was replace half of the uh, the components that you would find in your typical uh, Pilsner um, with half the components you would find in your typical blonde ale. And uh, and using a uh, an ale yeast at a slightly colder temperature, they were pretty much able to mimic the a lager-esque feel 
to it. And a lot of people say, hey, man, that's a really good Pilsner. And I'm like, aha, I fooled you. It's actually pretty complex for a lighter beer, which is a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people steer away, and it, it takes a little bit of education with the name of Cream Ale. And I think that you know they had a great beer, and then they called you it Cream Ale. You, you almost think it's a foamy, heavier beer, like, you like think a, it would be a heavier, heavier on the palate. Beer. It's, it's yeah. very light on We the tell palette. people that no uh, no bovines were injured in the making of this beer, <laughs> and that it's uh, you know it's oh. okay for the lactose Ooh. intolerant. You're okay. It'll there. be fine. <laughs> and to go back to you know to the original question is that you know as a homebrew, there's a recipe I developed. Um, as a team to make a commercially, you know, yeah, relevant beer. it's a, it's a beer. different thing, isn't it? It's like, a different thing, yeah. and, it, and it took the three of us to really pick apart what a cream ale is, what it should be, and then how to how to actually produce it properly. It's interesting. Um, it's, so it's, everything, yeah. you know, that that may have started out as as a homebrew or a recipe that uh, you know that we enjoyed drinking had to really come to the table as a how do we make this a real production beer? It's a really collaborative effort. You know, we all sit, we literally try the beer, we, we go through it, we kind of taste the notes that we get, and we kind of go, could we improve this a little bit? Like, could it use a little bit more mouthfeel? Could it use a little yeah. bit more hop? Could it use a little bit more spice? Whatever it is. We also have specialized backgrounds that we all come from that enable us to really, you know, function as different uh, areas of expertise within the company, aside from the actual brewing of the beer. Yeah. Um, that, you know, Matt is welding a uh, uh, background. Zach, obviously, in financial uh, and banking, uh, my background in marketing and um, um, packaging. Uh, and Darren is, is a really, you know, mechanic and hydraulics uh, a specialist, yeah. is that all of these things really play so a, a very major relevant, role. They're all very relevant. <laughs> and so <laughs> we all have very specialized, you know, roles here, but yeah. um, when it comes down to the actual business of the business, so, so is that we all have so to wear many hats. So selling the beer, what have you found? There's a lot of big names. Yeah. There's starting to be big names in Austin, which Absolutely. is interesting, because yeah. you got some brewers that are starting to get some national attention. you got some very big local powerhouses. I mean, you go in there, you go, hey, we're new, and they're like... Um, I've, I've always found a warm reception and we'll call ahead and we'll schedule a time to meet with the proper person there the bar manager or the person in charge of actually being able to take beer in um, and uh, and set out and, and go ahead and bring samples out there sit down explain you know a little bit of the backstory explain each one of the beers walk through yeah, it yeah. with them uh, the initial reception I believe is that uh, most people are very excited to have a new brewery in Austin and uh, once they Another you know they pick option, up the phone right? like what are you trying to sell me I'm like no I'm a new brewery man let me bring you some beer I want, I want you to try this I'm stuff. From here in town. they're like oh yeah come on no problem come yeah, on yeah, over yeah. That's and awesome. uh, bring me some beer so the reception is typically warm uh, however, you know, with, with the breweries that we do have here, uh, as many as there are and as few taps as there are available, um, there is a little bit of elbowing um, in order to kind of work your way in. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a tricky and once one. Once you find your way in the door, it seems to be okay. Yeah. Uh, there's rotating taps, yeah, which, gets, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you'll go to a bar and they love the beer and, and it's sold in two minutes and then you call them up and to get the next keg and they're like, oh yeah, well we got something else on, we'll get you back into rotation. And uh, and that to me is like, oh, it's just a little frustrating, but you, you know, you know that you did regular, really yeah. well. There was nothing against what your product is right. or, you know, nothing you did wrong, but at the same time, it's like, I want to keep my tap handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you want to own that. Josh has a, a different way of doing it. He, you know, mentioned calling ahead and setting a day to bring, mm -hmm. you know, samples by. I, I like to just go in a couple days before, make friends with everybody. It's an excuse to drink. You so, know, so, 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 in other words, I you, tell my wife I'm selling. I'm actually just out there. So, so you're like, you like, you like, you, 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 you like, you like scope up before it happens. And you kind of like, like case the place and they I go, case it and out. They go yeah. like, All right, I'm gonna What's go the vibe here? You know, I thought if we could if we could kind of build some relationships and get people behind us um, and then let them sample the beer, I think, I think we're going to be in. And so, 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 Zach, your experience selling, what's, what, what, do you, what do you find in the, in the market? Like, what, what's going on? Like, what, what are you seeing in the, in the Austin scene at this point that, that's interesting to you? Um, social media has made the world very small, you know? So yeah, ultimately, it's kind of ultimate, ultimate localizing, isn't it? Like, super local. So ultimately, you know, we can go to Dallas or we can go to Houston or we can go to San Antonio and we can present our product to that population. And those people enjoy it. And then they post about it on social media, whether it be Twitter, whether it be Facebook. And suddenly that is consumed by people that live here in Austin. Yeah. And all of a sudden it creates credibility for a product that nobody knew about. You know, local Austin companies do support local Austin companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, the more we can do that together, um, you know, the better. I mean. The movement is not necessarily just 
drink local craft beer, it's consume local product. A lot of the local people here, local restaurateurs, and a lot of lo local public uh, in general is thrilled to have a brewery in their backyard yeah. that they can call their own. Yeah, this whole you thing, know. I mean, you're in this, you're actually really interestingly located right in the middle of the peninsula. It's a, it's a really cool spot, actually. Hudson Bend uh, is sort of this anomaly. It's, it's what they call ETJ, or extraterritorial jurisdiction. So we're city of Austin, but we're outside of city limits. Uh, which means that we're almost outlaw country here. We don't follow the same rules. We don't have the same same tax structure. Is I can, that why you guys are I can smoke in here if I Sorry, wanted that's to. That's how we name the um, beers. But uh, you know, and they have our, our sheriff's office here on the corner, and I and 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 that's really that's really so that <laughs> the so Hudson they, Benders, they, as so we call them, the Benders, did. you can do whatever you want to do on Hudson Bend. Just don't go past that police station. Did You'll they, be did fine. They, did they add like the, the police station after you guys got in here? Or no, before? no, that was here before. It's a, it's a way okay. to govern I, Hudson I, I, Bay. I, I, I just want to make sure that's clear. You know, as many jokes as we make about it, they love us. I mean, yeah. we're here to do the right thing. Well, they're probably right? here to try some beer sometimes. A lot of the sheriffs they, come by here. Sheriffs they're, be like, um, the, gentlemen, I friendly. need to try your beer. I want to make sure it's valid. I'm not naming any names, but there's some good dudes over there. <laughs> yeah, there, cool. there are some good people. So, so what, what, what do they think of your logo, though? Your name and your logo, I mean, you guys are called Infamous. Yes. Like, what, where did, where, yeah, we where, are quite infamous. Where, 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 where did that come from? Like, how do you guys come we, up with that? You Is think it? about what infamous people are. They became famous. They became, you know, heroes Alcohol. because of yeah. their misdeeds. So it's reminiscent of a time when you had your 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 bootleggers, your gangsters, yeah, your yeah, outlaws, yeah. your rum runners, who were your heroes because they were the ones yeah, getting yeah. you your booze, and they were they were the the criminals, they were the outlaws, yeah. but they were the celebrities and they were infamous, and that was you know it was cool to be bad. It's and, almost like a culture, thing. and it's and, yeah. and it's cultural and it, and it's long lost. It really is. It's a forgotten time, uh, or long after we we founded Infamous Brewing Company. Um, my grandfather passed away, unfortunately, and uh, at the funeral, uh, his his brothers and sisters began to talk about the, their their past, uh, which was never spoken about, and it was very interesting to hear some of these stories about my family members being involved in in Murder Inc. Um, and being directly involved uh, in the Lindbergh baby uh, kidnapping, oh, you're and uh, and, oh, and I, I did a bit of quite a bit of research and actually found books written about them. And I found uh, and I found some old newsprint. He's news totally print. clean, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you can't do this business if you're an infamous yeah, yeah, character, yeah, yeah. which is one of the things why you're it's... You're a clean, infamous character. But it was very cool to go back to these old newspaper articles and stuff and see pictures of my family in there and go, wow, this is really cool. And this is long you know, hey, after I actually had the, we had the name what Infamous. The so we might have a few beers coming out named after some of the, oh, nice. uh, the old relatives. All of our beers are going to be named after infamous things, Hijack. events, history. And if you see some of the artwork, which a lot of the public hasn't gotten to see yet, when you see Hijack, actually, it's a really cool character of a guy in the Old West with a train in the background. And, like, if you see Bugsy, you know, and you see that newspaper article where it talks about Murder, Inc. and his arrest. I think it makes sense to just give a uh, shout-out uh, to Cinch, Inc., which has done all of our branding. Sure, incredible job. Uh, and they've done an absolutely incredible job. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. Uh, they understand what we're looking to do, yeah. and, uh, and they've done a very good job of delivering. Cool. Well, I think, I mean, we're running out of beer. I think we should refill we, we, those we, beers. We, we, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to try your beer. So we're going to set up a magic, magically a table will appear here. Boo. You guys are the back line, and I'm the front line. Is that the idea here? One for you. <laughs> Thank you. One for me, and, and all of those for you. So what's uh, what's this one? Oh, that is uh, something special. It's a uh, beer that we're uh, about to release, uh, hopefully second week of October, uh, called Pumpkin Masker. Ooh. And it is a pumpkin pecan porter. Wow. And uh, this is the last remaining bits of it wow. uh, in the pilot phase. And we, yeah. we challenged Matt to come up with what exactly we're going to produce that is a really small, limited basis that is based on a recipe Josh had presented to me a long time ago, which I think is really cool. And it's local, very, very local. I mean, we're, let's get to that one in a bit. I'm going I'm to start with the beer we've been talking about. Let's because totally change we've been, gears. Changing gears to the cream ale, we talked about this, and this is Hijack, old recipe, you know, not commonly seen anymore, but a really nice, light, drinkable. Years. You know, the cream ale is not particularly understood style, but it is a you know some a risk we were willing to take. It's an ale. It's it's kind an of ale, it, conditioned it's an ale at a cooler temperature. A it yeah. had a pilsner and a blonde, and they had a baby. This yeah. would be the result. It's really, I mean, really yeah. tasty beer. Like I mean, it's a real um, drinkable. Uh, like I said, bright, tart. Like it's got a lot of flavor for a lighter beer. Like, I mean, again, there's this kind of misconception yeah. that it's, lighter beers should not like... It's a simple beer, yeah. but it's, a, uh, its complexity in taste and depth uh, and mouthfeels especially is, uh, is extraordinary for something that, you know, the components of which are not all that extraordinary, um, but it is a very difficult beer to make because it's so delicate. 
and yeah. it's uh, it, it really is very. It's really, it's really nice. I mean, one of the one of the one of the things that we always say about that beer is that you know it's kind of a nice gateway. Gateway beer. beer. <laughs> well, stole it. Stole it. Oh, oh, it. it. But, oh, 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 and then a spill. Perfect. The beer diary oh, spill. Okay. But, oh. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let. <laughs> but I think that uh, if you like a Bud Light or you like a Miller Light or you know one of those, it's an amazingly unintimidating way to introduce yourself to craft. But I think the interesting thing with with this beer versus those is it'll seem incredibly flavorful, Matt. Hard to make this one? Uh, it's actually, it's not hard to brew, but it is very delicate. So uh, hard to ferment then? Or? Uh, yeah, well, fermentation, it, it needs a close eye. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's just delicate. Yeah. You know, there's, you, it's a sessionable beer, but um, <coughs> if, if fermentation gets away from you, it, it can, uh, well, yeah, it can, it can think, become. I think, I think one of the, uh, the major things is You can like, do it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It just, I'm kidding. It just, it just, it becomes like anything will overtake the flavor of the beer. Yeah, right. yeah it's a delicate beer, yeah, right? Sure. And yeah. I've, been, I've been drinking this one the whole time. So and that's what I meant when I when I interrupted you. No. I meant that it is a very interruptible beer. We give each other a hard time <laughs> all the time. Well, I'm, I'm moving on to Bugsy. So Bugsy <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so Bugsy, 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 along. No, Bugsy's moving on. along. Bugsy's, you know, infamous, you know, name. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of got some. Some some sort of connotations. Pub style amber, um, five five percent. Uh, it's got a lot of malt flavors. Yeah, um, actually, got a big malt profile. On yeah, it. yeah, but but finishes rather dry. Yeah. Um, and like that's not sweet at all. Yeah. And I made the the comment that that hijack was a sessionable sessionable beer. We think Bugsy's is too, and we even though it's a five five. I mean, this, this it is hijack, a five. Hijack was a five. Yep, five, five five as well. Oh, um, so five, five, and and yeah. Zach had made the reference earlier that we one we trick like pony. To, we do five fives. So yeah. that's it. That's it. All the beers five. Uh, but but we do like to make beers that we like to drink, and we want we knew that. Um, I mean, it's a volume business. Yeah. You know, and and if people can't go in and and have, you know, a couple of beers. Um, you know, you're you're really shutting yourself out. So we wanted to make beer that was drinkable, that people could could really um, enjoy and have a couple of pints uh, over a good conversation. And so the, the hijack and the bugsies uh, was an answer to that. All right, next up the IPA, which I mean, sounds like you guys are making some impact with this beer. It's it's uh, my fave. Your fave, personal? Yeah. I mean, nice and nice and like it's it's got that real classic West Coast kind of like. Like citrus resin, is that kind of what you went for on this that one? That is exactly what we wanted to do. We're all hop heads, yeah. right? So we all started off thinking that we need to have an IPA, and we need to have an IPA that is awesome, and we need to have an IPA that is meaningful and relevant in Austin. What, what's what's the what's the ABV on it? Like, is it seven percent? Seven percent. That's not bad. Like, I mean, it, 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 like it's not overly malty though. Like, I mean, that's the thing I really like about this one. It's, it's a real nice. It's a really drinkable IPA. The the term that we coined is uh, jowly bitterness. And uh, it doesn't leave you with that sort of, uh, you know, pucker up bitterness that that it leaves you wanting more. And I mean, I think at some level, having a good IPA is is a testament to what you're capable of. Yep. And well, I think that yeah, Austin I think is that, a uh, Austin is is a beer rich environment, but it's also an IPA centric environment. Well, no, and I think I think you have an awful lot of edu very educated folks. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll drink this and go, holy yep. crap! You guys are competing with the West Coast dudes with this one. Like this, I'm like so honestly, uh, my, my honest opinion, this thing, this one is. This one is like battling it out with the West Coast guys. I, I judge a brewery based on you. their no. IPA or their pale ale. Yeah, and you guys—I mean, you guys are doing a lot of dry hopping. I think for the like yeah. the, 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 the flavor and the aroma because it really, know. really it comes that that comes across. I mean, it comes across to me like this is a heavily dry hopped, heavily. And we keep for. the we keep the caramel malts kind of low. Yeah, and keep it a little well, dry on the back end. Because it's because so yeah, it's a little it's it's not caramely. You know, like I think some of the like I was like I was saying some of the guys get pretty caramely and and. and they, that that's kind okay. of battles, but no, it's this different style, right? Mm -hmm. Like whereas this one is like just minimal malt against the hops. This is truly the style of beer that we gravitate towards, and and we had done uh, in the pilot phase of this beer, uh, we we did about a dozen different renditions on dry hop and different varietals yeah. and, and different concentrations of those varietals, and uh, and almost with a blind taste test, um, every time we would come back to it and we'd flip over the card, and each one of us was all warrior, and that's what that is our dry hop. But you know we tried many different varieties. Yeah. Um, but every time we all came back to that same one, all three of us unanimously, and we said, okay, well, this is obviously where yeah, our taste Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a delicious IPA. It's becoming revered, and, and that's very cool. I think that, that uh, you know, like I said, in an uh, IPA-rich environment, 
that uh, to have an IPA that, that starts to stand out yeah, um, yeah. It, is something special because there's so many great beers out there. There's so many great IPAs. Yeah. So what is this? This is this this is this is interesting. I'm, I'm getting like less hops, more malts. A little bit like almost like not quite barley wine ish, but it's it's in that it's kind of heading that way. It's actually uh, it's a beer we call Infamy. It weighs in at nine and a half percent. Are you serious? Um, it's a wow. yep. Infamy by Infamous. Infamy by Infamous. But it doesn't taste like nine percent at all. And I'm not getting any, almost actually, any alcohol uh, warming yeah. off this. Like, right, and, like, and it's it's a heavy surprised. hitter. Oh, I, I think I'd be surprised. Um, it, it's actually an adaptation of Thomas Jefferson's pale ale recipe from the 1700s. Wow. And, uh, and I ran across it in, in an old homebrew book. And I said, man, that's really interesting. This guy's a hop head. He just had, you know, tons of, it was a pale ale. He had tons of, uh, tons of Fogel's hops in there. And I said, I back, want, back in those uh, days, I mean, it's interesting to put that in context for folks. <laughs> the concept of Cascade didn't exist. Right. I mean, Cascade and all these West Coast hops, I mean, they, it was like, Fogel's was one of the English ex examples yeah. of hops. They're talking about like, late 1700s. I yeah, mean, this like, I mean, there was exist. very limited hops back in those and, days. Uh, so. And the story goes that he used to brew wow. 15 gallons of this beer every two weeks just for him and his family. He was using grits uh, in, in his malt bill. And I said, well, that's very, very interesting. Um, I'd like to try it and see kind of wh where we could take and this grits, beer. And grits, of course, are corn-based. Corn, yep, just and, stone and, ground corn. And you have, to, you have to boil them, kind of gelatinize them to make them um, like I would, I would get up an hour before the brew and I'd, uh, and I'd cook the grits and, and get those ready and, uh, and, and you throw them in the several mash. different techniques. And they throw them in the mash. Oh, and it's like hot napalm. I mean, that stuff is sticky. It's hot. Putting it so in, love, mixing love, it in the mash. You love working with that stuff. You oh, think, oh, it, it'll stick fun. to your skin. And it'll just <laughs> it'll just seep in and burn. We it it really is wild napalm. stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, w one of the one of the things that was sort of the tricky part about this beer was I wanted to use honey and, and going back in history a little bit and looking at you know Louisiana Purchase, which was his kind of you know big thing as uh, you know his early roles as a president um, that uh, I wanted to go with uh, two blow honey and, uh, and it was very floral and uh, the, the floralness of the honey is what stood out and, and I don't particularly like beers uh, that are made with honey that have uh, that have that floralness to it that are flower uh, the bees feed on flowers whereas I tried several different uh, varieties of honey going from orange blossom tupelo native wildflower honey which all had this big flowery okay. taste to it um, yeah, and what yeah. I discovered was blueberry honey. And blueberry honey is really cool, although extremely rare and hard to find. And at the time, as a homebrew, it was easy enough to get. As a production on a large scale, nearly impossible to find in a large scale. So you're scale. like, like well, there's only, who's got 12,000 pounds of blueberry honey? There's only, like, uh, uh, there's only a couple of apiaries in the country that the, uh, that the bees only feed on blueberry blossoms. So that's what produces the blueberry so honey. Here. And, uh, and, and it's unique, but there's no floral essence has, has, has anyone said you guys are hardcore? I mean, I'm just wondering if, if, if it's ever been said before, because that's, that's hardcore. Like, I'll, drink, I'll drink to that. No, 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 no. no. I mean, like, this, is, this, this beer is... Um, pretty crazy, actually. Like, it's not overly sweet, though. Like, right, I mean, like, right. it, 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 it's still, it's, it finishes kind of medium, mm -hmm. like not sweet, not. I'm not, very adamant not dry. about our beers not finishing yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't care for that. No, we deal. don't like residual sugar. Yeah, um, a, a too, clean too much. finish. Certainly. Too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little tear right now. I'm, now, sure, I'm right. sure you'll revisit all of these. In, but in now you got to You got to try this one. Okay, this is something so, we're so, very so excited this is, about. So this is we have in a bottle because you guys have basically sold all the kegs of this already, right? Yeah. Um, maybe there's something underneath this, but we'll never say. But but the, rea but the reality is this beer is a pumpkin pumpkin pecan, pecan porter. porter. So obviously you know here here in in you know Texas Hill Country and all that like I mean pecans, pumpkin it's that time of year porter. I wouldn't say it's getting cooler yet. I mean, I, uh, like no, it, as evidence from uh, this show, it's not exactly it's cool. To, the sun's about to set. That's yeah, not too good. This, <laughs> this beer is um, deliciously spicy. I, mean, I haven't even tried it yet, but holy crap, nutmeg, allspice. Porters typically come off a little roasty, um, and so we, we didn't want to be overly roasty. We wanted a lot of the other notes to come through, um, yeah, no, that this, being this the pumpkin, the spice, the pecan, um, and some nuttiness and a little bit of chocolate kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so, so you get you get all these different notes uh, that kind of come through, and, and uh, it's a very complex beer, but it also is not overly sweet, so you feel like you could yeah, have... It's actually you know. it's, it's actually really <laughs> tantalizingly dry, and right, like, I'm, I'm drinking this going, holy shit, like it, this is... It oh, looks like me. it's going to be this malt bomb of... What I think, you know, there's a cleanness to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, there's you, a cleanliness you, to it, which is just a pure it, it's taste, actually, it ends as being, opposed to, like, a bunch of different flavors kind of melding together. Yeah, it ends up being literally a quality thing. 
Um, I mean, like just pure quality. Um, so I usually declare a favorite. This is really hard. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, actually. I mean, I mean, I think I'll do this, like the, the, the pumpkin. I like that. Pumpkin pecan porter. That really brings us to the end, gentlemen. Well, we appreciate so that. We have Thanks. to we have to do our so grand good. finales. Where's uh, you chug all of those beers? No, Is that the grand finale? No, that's afterwards. Oh man! Come on. So cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Skol, Nazdorovia. You guys can just let, like just let it rip. Like let, oh, let, let it rip. Chin -chin. Let it rip. Chin chin. Chin chin. I think, I, think, I, think, I think most importantly, thank Goodbye. you for having us. Oh no no no! Thank you for having us. I mean, this is your Absolutely. place. Absolutely, it's man. great to, to have you guys here. We're oh. really thrilled. Uh, you know, it's um, it, it's exciting for us. Our, our process is a little bit unique. Our beers are. We make traditional beers, but some of them are highly unique, and um, we're, we're proud of every one of them. It's really, really amazing sitting in a brew house you guys built yourself, largely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Right there. Slancha. To you.